I started off this time? Yeah, I started off. All right, guys. Uh, today, we're actually going to work on this side of the truck. Last week, we did the other side. And uh, last week, we focused more on just replacing of the rusty panel. This week, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be kind of opposite of last week. Last week, we time-lapsed the painting portion, but explained all the replacing of the panel. This week, we're going to time-lapse all of the replacing of the panel and explain the grinding down and paint finishing. Like everything from bondo to spot glazing and just tips and tricks like i said last video i'm not an auto body mechanic but i've worked with bondo a decent amount so let's get to it so if y'all want to see uh see more on the building of the truck or just our, our journey trying to restore this rust bucket hit the subscribe button hit the like button maybe put a comment in the little thing hit the little dingleberry yeah, press the little dingleberry that pops up next to the subscribe button. So um, what we're doing right now is we're going to be knocking down all of these uh, individual tacks, knocking them down smooth with the body lines of the truck. So you just want to be able to run your hand across it and not necessarily have zero bumps, but you want to have it smooth. Just to cover the small dips and cracks in here, you don't want to uh, grind it down so much that there's an actual dip to, you don't want a valley on your grind, grind marks. Because you can sand out, you can sand the metal down with the Bondo, and to be honest, most of the Bondo that goes on here is gonna wind up dust on the floor in the air and probably in our noses because we forgot dust masks. So, uh, what Bondo is, is a two-part epoxy body filler. So you have this, which is your part A, and then the cream hardener, which is your part B, or your catalyst. Um, Chris Fix has a really good way of uh, mixing this and getting the right amount of A to B. Uh, you make it a circle, even all the way around, and about a half inch high, and then take a strip of this, it's a quarter inch across, uh, and you lay it across the diameter of the circle. That'll give you about a perfect ratio of body filler to hard. consistency of this, not necessarily consistency, but a consistent color. So you don't want to see any red streaks in with the gray. That's part of the reason that the hardener is a different color than the actual part one epoxy itself. And we're getting about there now. Another good tip, uh, if you're not fast with this stuff, It'll harden up if you leave it in a bump. Spread it out like this and it'll stay soft for longer. Or
now that we've got the bondo applied, uh, dependent on how much bondo you put on and the ambient temperature, dry times can vary. Um, once it's tacky but not sticky, you can start working it with a bondo knife, which is, looks kind of like a cheese grater. Uh, if you need to take off a whole lot, I would suggest doing that because hand sanding it or using a DA sander or anything, it, it'll eat up your sanding pads, one, and two, uh, it takes hours. I've learned the hard way. Yeah, not to mention dust everywhere. When you do it in this stage, where it's tacky but not sticky, it pretty much just makes little pebbles. When you want to sand it is when it's completely hard. Don't start sanding it when it's tacky. All right, this is a DA sander. I believe it stands for dual action. Mm -hmm. Dual action sander. Uh, it's just gonna help us knock down the bulk of the Bondo and yeah. Normally, when you're working with Bondo, you're going to want to start off with something more aggressive like a 100 grit, and then work your way up. Uh, so I'd go normally from 100, maybe to 200, 250, 300, and then from 300 I'd probably skip to 600, and that's just, uh, there's very small scratches in in the Bondo, that's what sandpaper does, is, is it abrades away small pieces at a time uh, in whatever you're scraping against. And you just want to make sure those scratches are as small as possible and you're blending the Bondo in with the body of the truck. <laughs> as you guys saw, you don't need one of these. It just makes your life easier. You can do, you can get by. In fact, I like to finish out everything with just regular sandpaper. It's actually easier for me to feel. There's bumps and the minute scratches and flaws while I'm using this. And when you're using the hand sanding, what you're going to want to do is you don't want to be super forceful with it. You're going to ruin your sandpaper and you're going to clog it up. So, where you see uh, the, bond, the primer, the metal of the new panel, and then the primer, and the Bondo, and then the metal of the old, the, the truck. Like this, this is where we weld it. You can barely tell. The Bondo is covered in uh, areas completely and when you're sanding these lines the metal the primer and the bondo they're going to get closer and closer together and the closer they get together the smoother it's going to feel and if you close your eyes and run your hand across it you shouldn't be able to tell where the bondo starts and the metal stops so what we're doing now is prepping the actual thing for primer uh, i don't have paint yet but just prepping it for primer Pretty much, it's going to be the same thing as paint, but 91% uh, 91% isopropyl alcohol is uh, is what we're using, and that just gets oils, dust, and dirt off of the panel. All three of those are going to be your worst enemy when it comes to paint. You're going to be fighting it if you don't clean it off. First things first. I'm going to shake them up. These have been resting in a bath of hot water for close to 30 minutes, I would, I would guess. Um, 
they're nice and warm. First things first, self etching primer. This will help any paint adhere to the metal, to the Bondo, to the existing primer a lot better than regular primer. After we get this coat done, we're going to be hitting it with primer. Come on, focus. Come on, focus. Ooh, there we go. Primer filler. This is going to fill any tiny, like small, I'm not saying pinholes in the Bondo. This is going to fill any tiny sanding scratches that you're going to have. On top of that, it is sandable. So after you put it on there, you can run over it with a super fine sandpaper and clean up uh, any mistakes you might have in it. So to start with the primer filler, or not the primer filler, the self etching primer, uh, I'm just an amateur, but I'm gonna give you a couple tips I've learned. You always wanna start like either away, uh, here's the nozzle by the way, the little red tip. Um, you always wanna start either pointing away from your piece and then bring it in at a wide angle, or you wanna, if you have something small, start off of the piece, start your stream, and then bring it across and end it off of the piece. So what I'm gonna do, is start from the top and work my way down uh, just holding it about six to eight inches away moving fast enough to put a coat you can see on but not fast enough to let it build up if you let it build up you're gonna have runs in, in your primer self etching primer is kind of notorious for being a runny paint all right now that we got a, our first little base coat on here, you're gonna wanna wait, let it dry. The manufacturer's specifications are usually on the back of the can. So after, we're, after this is dry, we're gonna put a slightly heavier coat on there. Uh, and you're gonna wanna put this over any exposed metal, any Bondo, uh, and existing primer on the new panel. zoom in zoom you guys in a little bit uh, I don't know if you can see that but right now it's still glossy so what you're gonna want to do is wait until it goes matte or that's called uh, flashing when the paint flashes then it's usually good for a second coat unless it's cold outside then you might want to give it 10 to 30 minutes if it's cold where you're painting or if your work piece is cold what wasn't so crucial with the last can, uh, and we want to start worrying about, especially when we get into primers and base coats, are tiger striping. Tiger striping is a phenomenon where you're only painting in one direction and not several. It's, mm -hmm. it's repaired, the rust is, that's both, both wheel arches. It's been a journey, but it's that's a little bit of cancer that's not in, uh, not in the body of uh, this 96 Tacoma. So next week we are working, we're, next week we're definitely going to be doing the tailgate and my fender flares are supposed to be in. But everybody knows how the mail is right now, so. So that could be delayed. It could Who just knows? Be, could just be tailgate next week. So uh, that's it for this week, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace.